What an awesome God we serve. Water, you turn into Good evening, sisters and brothers, and once again, we want to acknowledge all of you that are viewing this broadcast on MTM TV, Love FM, and also on the various social media platforms to include YouTube, Zoom, and Facebook. I'm Stevenson Samuels, and I'm the chairman of the Kingston Keswick Convention, but also I am the chairman for this evening. I want to therefore welcome you to the 61st convention. Can you believe it? We are already at the 61st convention and indeed we are anticipating a great evening this evening. God's specially anointed speaker for this convention, we have been journeying with him for the entire week, is Bishop the Honorable Conrad Pitkin. Costas of St. James and Senior Pastor of Faith Temple Assembly of God situated right there in Montego Bay, St. James. We have been absolutely inspired by Bishop Pitkin over these past days. And this evening, the final night of the feast, he's going to be sharing the word again with us. We're looking forward to a real time of inspirational challenge from the word of God. Please invite your friends, therefore, call them up. Family members, neighbors, co-workers, call them up and tell them that we are on the air and let them join you in participating in this great convention. We invite you now to raise your voices with us and join with the Waltham Park New Testament Church of God praise team as they lead us in joyful worship and singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
going to turn it for your good in 2021. Here we go. We sing it together. Thank you very much, Waltham Park. We were totally blessed by your ministry and we joined you in joyful singing. Well, because prayer is so critical, we make sure in any typical worship service that we have prayer every evening. And so we are going to now invite Reverend Leslie Pinnock He's a pastor of the Escarpment Road New Testament Church of God to come to us now with the opening prayer. Reverend Pinnock. Eternal God and our Father, we come before your throne this evening thanking you, Lord, for another day, thanking you for your many blessings. Thanking you, Lord, for bringing us together as the body of Christ across denominational boundaries and barriers into this evening of Keswick worship. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the fact that you have been meeting with us all week long. Lord, we have been worshiping you in song in giving, in praise and worship, and in the word. We want to thank you for the way in which you have been leading and directing and speaking to us. We have come one more time, Lord, as your people. Oh God, we have come into your gates with thanksgiving this evening. We have come into your course with praise. God, we're thankful because clearly you have been good to us. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. As we come this evening, Lord, 
We ask that your spirit will lead us and guide us. We ask that your spirit, O God Almighty, will hear our cry and remove from our hearts, God, anything that would seek to stand in between us and you as we seek to worship you this evening in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for this coming together. We ask, O oh God Almighty, that your spirit will be upon every individual who will participate in this evening's worship service. We pray that this worship service will bring glory unto you and you alone. So right now, Lord, God Almighty, will you anoint, O oh God Almighty, each individual those who will moderate, those, oh God, who will be God worshiping, leading us into praise and worship, those, oh God Almighty, who will be ministering in song, God, as we give to you our offering, God, as your word comes forth, let that word, oh God, be clear, let it be precise, let it speak to our hearts, God, in this moment of pandemic, in these days of difficulties, in these days of trial, I pray that your word to us, will help us to reaffirm, God, to reassure, and to, oh God, strengthen our hearts and our faith as we seek to be consistent during these difficult days. God, we commit ourselves to you. God, we commit this time to you. And we say, Lord, have your way tonight. Let your name be glorified. And we pray that at the end of this evening service, that Lord, someone would have said, Lord, I surrender render all God in the giving of their lives to you and somebody else would have been able to say thank you Lord for meeting my needs for speaking to me in a way oh God almighty that will encourage or challenge me so we bless your name now Lord and we tell you thanks for these and for other mercies as we worship you as we look to you and as we wait upon you in Jesus name we pray and we say amen and amen thank you very much pastor pinnock for that prayer and with that kind of approach to the throne of grace we are going to have a great evening god bless you let me remind this audience that scripture also forms a central part of christian worship and over the past days we have been having prominent leaders in our nation who are persons of faith reading for us the evening scripture. This evening, we continue along that vein. We are so delighted to have Judge Leighton Pusey with us. He will be reading the Holy Scriptures. Sisters and brothers, receive Judge Pusey as he shares with us the Word of God from the Holy Scriptures. A reading of the Word of God from the Epistle of James, chapter 1. Verses 2 to 12. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and is and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres. 
on the trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Each evening, you have faithfully given to the work and the ministry of Kingston Keswick. Let us now receive the evening's offering. Good evening to everyone listening to us on the various social media platforms radio and television tonight i ask you to join with us and give glory to god for the great things he has done his word has gone forth in power right across the corporate area many parts of jamaica and indeed the world and we believe that many lives have been impacted we shared with you at the beginning of the convention that we were really excited about the ability this has given us to reach so many across the globe. Even though we realized that the cost of producing and broadcasting an online format we were was greater than an in-person church service, we were nevertheless committed to continuing the ministry to the wider body of believers and those needing to hear the word. As we look at our social media platforms, we recognize that throughout the week, more than 6,000 persons have accessed the broadcast which cover our, covers our nightly lunch hour, youth, men, women's and children's meeting, not counting those who listened by radio or viewed on the television. For that, we truly, truly want to say thank you, Lord, for the many you have allowed to hear your word and I trust whose lives have been impacted. Permit me at this stage to read from the word of God in 2 Corinthians 8 verses 1 to 4. And now brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace of God that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. Like the Macedonians, we recognize the financial hardships many are going through. But like the Macedonians, I had hoped that out of severe trial, you would have urgently pleaded with us to give to the work of the Lord. But the word of God says in everything, give thanks. And so on behalf of the Kingston Keswick Council, I want to say thank you to those who have made financial commitments, but in faith and saying thanks in advance to those who plan to do so. The theme of this year's convention is, as you're aware, consistent faith in challenging times. And as the treasurer with the responsibility to ensure that all expenses are met, I realize that I have to be consistent in my faith and believe that amidst this challenge, the Lord who has provided for Keswick in the past will do so again this year. Let me say thanks also to those churches, businesses, and other individuals to whom we reached out 
both locally and overseas, and who have already given their financial support. And we look forward to the others coming alongside us. As we want to say, it is still not too late. So as the Lord stirs your heart tonight, let me again share with you some convenient ways to do so. You can make a direct transfer or deposit to our Kingston Keswick current account, number 301-981-546 at the NCB Halfway Tree branch, and that's branch code 300771. Or you can log in online to www.spuropen slash sorry spurpen.com slash Kingston Keswick to make your donation using your credit or debit card in either Jamaican or US dollars. Simply call us or text us at 876-812-7390 or 876-922-7140 to make alternative arrangements for giving. Or for those within our borders, why not simply place your donation in an envelope addressed to the Kingston Keswick, take it to your churches and ask them to contact us. We will make arrangements to collect. Again, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for giving in these challenging times. We encourage you to continue your support for the ministry even after the end of this year's convention as this is an annual event and you can use the same links we've given you above. May the Lord richly bless you and use you in the building of his kingdom. And we hope to see you at Keswick 2022, if not before. Thank you again. Great inspirational singing has always been a tradition of the Kingston Keswick Convention. This year it is no less, and I'm sure you have been blessed by the list or lineup of great singers we've had over the past days. We are so pleased and delighted to have with us the ministry of the Bethel Baptist Church. They have been journeying with us all these years as a church, their choir, their praise team, and once again, we're going to be hearing them. Before they come, however, I want to introduce to you the speaker for this evening. You know him very well by now, Bishop Conrad Pitkin. Bishop the Honorable Conrad Pitkin, as you know, is from the Moran Bay community by birth, but he has been living in Montego Bay for a number of years. You have heard of his many uh, academic uh, uh, milestones and achievements, and also you know that he is the pastor of the Faith Temple assemblies of God. Indeed, he is a minister within that denomination and was designated chairman of the Caribbean executive of assemblies of God, member of the world fellowship of uh, the assemblies of God executive and first presiding bishop, second presiding bishop and county bishop, general secretary and president of the national men's ministry and chairman of several committees within that denomination. We are so pleased to have this great man of God with us again for the final time for Keswick Convention 2021. Let me just advise that he's also married to Devilly for 46 solid years. Please, sisters and brothers, receive now the ministry of Bishop the Honorable Conrad Pitkin as he shares with us under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Christ And by his strength alone I 
for this evening and chairman of the Kesey Kingston Committee, Reverend Dr. Stevenson Samuels, members of the Executive and Planning Committee, other members of the clergy joining us virtually, and our audience on MTM Television, Love 101 FM, the Family Station, and the many social media platforms. To those who have joined us here at home in Jamaica and in the diaspora, a pleasant good evening. This evening marks the final in the series of messages 
and the final evening of Kingston Keswick 2021. What a week it has been. The midday lunchtime <clears throat> devotions led by and presented by the various speakers the youth session last Friday evening and the children session on Saturday. We thank God for what he has done and for what he is doing for the lives that have been transformed, for those who have been challenged through the word of God and for those who are experiencing uh, struggles and questions in their faith but have received a word from the Lord. As the moderator, I would like to thank the many who have encouraged us during the week by the various comments that came in on the platforms and may I ask you that when you go to these platforms as I usually do in my own uh, station and in my own uh, channel on YouTube we ask you to subscribe and not only that you subscribe but that you also ask a friend or family member to do so. How can we fail to also thank our brother and friend, uh, Mr. Basil Hansen and his wife and his team uh, at the studio for having worked with us. Uh, it has not been chairman one of the easiest things to do because when you're working with electronic devices, anything can happen anytime but we have a group of committed persons at ntm studio who have done a fantastic job and from my perspective i need to say thanks as the main presenter don't call myself mr chairman a guest speaker i am the main speaker not a guest in my own country and i thank god another guest among my brothers and sisters and in the studio with me uh, is my very good friend and brother whom i've known for over 40 years uh evangelist errol Rattry. he promised that he won't make any noise while he's here with me but we have been blessed by the lord as we spoke during the week on consistent faith in challenging time and i pulled from that a sub theme the power of consistent faith uh, in challenging time may i invite you now to pause as you bow your heads with me if you can in prayer our father and our god loving and compassionate it is to you that we bow our hearts this evening and thank you for the many blessings that we have been blessed with thank you for this week and for the word presented for the many activities during this week we thank you for the keswick convention and the platform that it provides for your children to be grounded in the word to be strengthened in their faith and to be challenged to live lives acceptable to you we remember those who have been murdered viciously street persons and other persons their families for the mother and daughter that were slain in the presence of the seven-year-old 
girls, the 84-year-old mother and her brother, we pray for your comfort. We pray for Bishop Davis and the church in Portmore who mourn at this time with the family and the many families across Jamaica who are mourning and who are grieving now because of the loss of a loved one. Oh God, we pray for healing. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for strength. And we pray, oh God, that they will not turn from you. But even in this moment of challenge and temptation, that their faith will be strengthened in you. As we share your word tonight, O oh God, come alongside your servant and minister in an extraordinary way. In Jesus' name, amen. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, O God, and our Redeemer. Amen. Tonight, my friends, I would wish in the closing hours of this great virtual convention to end from Daniel chapter 3. And I'll be reading from verse 24 to verse 27. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I have seen four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The king recognized Christ. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire, and the prince and governors and captains and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. My brothers and sisters, the three Hebrews were cast into the fire. But an amazing occurrence happened. Instead of dying in the flame, instead of being burned to ashes in the flames, look, they are loosed from their bonds and they are walking around in the flame. Nebuchadnezzar cannot believe his eyes. He is in disbelief. He is in awe and command them to come out, which they did, totally unarmed by the violence of the flame. Notice, if you will, with me, the amazing preservation that took place in the midst of the furnace that was heated seven times hotter than normal. But that's not the only thing. The young men knew not whether God would have saved them, but one thing was certain in their consistent faith. They knew that the power of the God they serve would have been able to save them. In fact, my brothers and sisters, they said to the king, you can do whatever you want to do. 
But the God whom we serve, he is able to deliver us. But not only did God deliver them, but God came down in the midst of the furnace and walked with them. Not only did he walk with them, but the even king recognized that the fourth man in the furnace was the son of God, Jesus himself. To this, the king testified and proclaimed that he saw Jesus, the fourth man, the son of God, walking with the men. Oh, I wish I could have been there to have seen such sight on the king. Uh, I want to believe that his countenance was totally changed. I am here, my brothers and sisters, to attest to the truth this evening that those who practice consistent faith are preserved by an ever-present God. For when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the flames, they found that they were not alone. Can I tell you tonight that when you're going through difficult times, you are not alone, that God is with you. I can tell you without a doubt that for the believer, there is something different between a believer and an unbeliever. We both go through difficult times, but what's the difference? The difference is that God is with the child of God. God is with the believer when the believer goes through this difficult and trying time. The God that they had professed faith in earlier met them in the fire. Hallelujah. Yeah. The king and the others with him could not believe their eyes. In fact, the king had proclaimed earlier, there is no God that's more powerful than I, King Nebuchadnezzar. But he had a pleasant and a rude surprise because someone that is greater than him. I don't know about you tonight and I really don't know how you think but I want you to know that if you're viewing this evening closing Keswick Convention, I am here to tell you that my God lives and when I am going through difficult time my God is in that furnace with me and I shall come out as pure process gold. They threw three men in the flames and now there are four men loose and walking in the bounds. One preacher said that when God came down, he brought a refrigerator with him to keep the men cool in the furnace, whatever it was. But I rather believe that God harms were around the men and protecting them from the flames of the fire. The arm of God is with you. I love the hymn that said, leaning on the everlasting arms. I am safe and I'm secured from all alarm. Oh God, we serve a mighty and a powerful God. Here is a lesson for you and for me that even in a furnace in Babylon and Babylon, God kept his promise to his people. I love Isaiah 43 and verse 2, and I have been sharing this uh, for several evenings. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. But I love the second part, because the second part is relevant to tonight's message. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's from the prophet Isaiah. The king testified. The king said, they are not hurt. Not one here in their head is singed. That was the testimony of a heathen king to the world. That was said by the prophet Isaiah in God's covenant for his people. My friend, we have the same promise.
In Hebrews 13 verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such a thing as he have. For he had said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When the flames rise around you, open your eyes, my brothers and sisters, for Jesus is right there with you. Notice what happened because the Lord met them in the fiery furnace. Those who exercise consistent faith will be free in the fire. All the fire did was burn away the things that had them bound. The Lord used the fire to loosen them from the ropes that held them. When the fires of persecution and affliction come into your life, you need to remember this truth. The Lord is merely freeing you from some things that have had you bound in your life. As the flames burn away the ropes of besetting sins, bad attitudes, bad habits that I could go on, but time will not avail me. You will find that you are freer in the fire than you were outside of the fire. There are sometimes in the persecution, in the trial, you feel free. You know why? Because the presence of God is with you. Often, my brothers and sisters, persecution seem like the worst possible thing that can happen to the life of a believer. But it can prove to be the best thing we have ever experienced. I think about John Wesley, the father of the Methodist church movement. He wanted to preach in the pulpits of the land of England. But his doctrines were so different from his message. And his message was so contrary to the establishment message that was being preached in the day. They forbade him to preach in their pulpits. They wouldn't let him stand in a church and preach. John Wesley was not allowed to preach in a pulpit in an established church. Well, he thought that was bad. When it that happened, he thought he was being deprived. But my brothers and sisters, you see, God knew something that Wesley didn't know. God knew that the masses of the people weren't in those churches anyway. Sometimes you look at COVID as being a negative thing. But do you know, my brothers and sisters, that the massive of the people are not in the four walls of our church? And here comes COVID-19 that has now pushed the church into a different realm. And Keswick Convention 2021 is reaching a far larger audience, larger congregation that you would have met had you been in a face-to-face -face convention. You ought to honor God and praise God because God is using COVID-19 to his glory and for his honor and so Souls are going to be saved because of what has happened. So many are being renewed and strengthened who would not have been otherwise been strengthened. God knew that the masses of the people weren't even coming to those churches just like is happening today. The masses of the people were out there. So John Wesley, going through the fires of being excommunicated and deprived of the pulpit of the churches, went out in the open air. John Wesley and his brother Charles, along with George George Whitfield of the United States of America, 
Three great fiery preachers for God. They began to preach out in the open air where the people were. And thousands were one to the Lord Jesus Christ. The flames just simply loose them from the ropes and bond that was around them. The fire has the power to set us free from the things that bind us and hinder our walk with God. God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I trust uh, that you're receiving the truth uh, in God's word. You are loosed because of the fire of COVID. You are loosed because of the ravishness of COVID. You can preach to a wider, you can reach a wider audience for God. People are listening to, to, to Keswick 2021 uh, that has never listened before. Some have never heard about Keswick Keswick, uh, Kingston Keswick, but they're hearing about Kingston Keswick after 60 odd years. They're hearing about it for the first time. We ought to give God praise. Yeah. Chairman, I think you need to yeah. celebrate yeah. with your Kingston brothers and sisters, yeah. and we from Montego Bay will celebrate yeah. with you, yeah. because it is likely we are going to have to do the same thing in Montego Bay this year. Those who practice consistent faith will be preserved in the fire. <clears throat> the fire did not harm them. God allowed them to go through the fire. But he did not allow the fire to go through them. Bless God. Again, there is a powerful truth here for those who might be walking through their fiery furnace tonight. The furnace may be frightening, but you were not brought to it for destruction. God will not allow you to be hurt. God will not allow you to be destroyed. Take the word from this country preacher tonight that God is going to preserve you through your fire. Let me read again Isaiah 43, 2 for you, the second part. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, through the furnace, thou shalt not be burnt neither shall the flame kindle upon you even though through the flames may come they will not free you from what they will only free you from what binds you you will be safe in the fire because there will be someone with you every inch every step step of the way. He will not leave you, but he will preserve you through the fire and he will keep you for his glory. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, only three men went in the furnace but when Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace, he saw four men walking around, not four men bound, not four men lying on the ground, wailing in pain, but four men walking around and talking. And I want to believe this evening that the three young men, they knew who was with them in that fire and they were giving him thanks and recognizing who he was. When Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace and saw four men walking, he called forth for the men to come out of the fire. Verse 26, only three came out. What happened to the fourth man? If four men in there and only three came out, then where is the fourth? Well, he is still in the furnace, my brothers and sisters. So when you get through, you will find him waiting. If there's a furnace for you, you will find him waiting. He will look at your flames and say, cool it. Oh, bless God. You know, I feel like shouting a hallelujah on this final night. God will say, 
cool it. Hallelujah. The three Hebrew young men were preserved by the presence of God. And you will, my friends. Oh, when preachers get anointed, yes. it's a different thing. Yes, yes, so yes. let me close yes. and allow my friends to do the rest. Yes. Those who practice consistent faith will be preserved by an all-powerful God. When they came out of the furnace, they were inspected. But I wonder the kind of inspection that they went through. Because the king could not think that he has lost the battle. We are told that not one hair in the head was singed. Not even one. No scar, no scratch, no blemish. Isaiah 43, you understand my repeating this verse, because you need to get it tonight. Isaiah 43, 2. The second part, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall a fl the flame kindle upon you. There was no suit on them, and they didn't even smell like smoke. What a miracle! If you can't even, you can't even walk into somewhere or into a convenience store or some public place where people smoke without getting the smell of the cigarette smoke on your clothes. But the power of God operated in this situation and overcame the furnace totally and none of the smoke were on them. They were insulated in the fire by an awesome and an all powerful God. I fail to see how men can reject my God knowing what my God can do. I often my brothers and sisters don't talk about myself but in this closing night I need to just brush my testimony because I have been walking with the Lord for over 50 years and he has not failed me. I am in Christian ministry, pastoral ministry for over 45 years and I've proven God over and over again. Just that, just God, he will be there when he does something, he does it all the way. When he heals, he heals completely. When he saves, he saves completely. When he forgives, he forgives completely. Whatever he does, he does it all the way. How? Oh, can this happen? Because he is the omnipotent God, the all-powerful God, and he is able to use that power in your life and in mine. So when you find yourself looking at a, a fiery furnace, remember that you serve an all powerful God who is able to keep you in times of affliction and who is able to bring you through for his glory not for yours but for his glory he will bring you through I am closing tonight just to say to you those who practice consistent faith in God will be promoted. They will be promoted because they were faithful to the Lord. They passed through the furnace. And on the other side, they are promoted in the kingdom. And there is a lesson for us to follow. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. It is a true lesson, but it is also a lesson that we might not like to think about. 
But listen to me. You cannot stand on Mount Carmel in power until you sit by a dry brook in humility. Yes, 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 yes. You cannot lead the nation of Israel until you first watch someone else sheep in a wilderness. You have to be tested before you can be able to do God's will. And God has called you for a purpose. And maybe you're going through your testing tonight because God is getting ready to use you in a more powerful way. Yes. Yes. I end tonight by saying, if you're in your fire, fear not, for the fourth man is with you. If you're sitting by your broken humility, don't worry, because your God is going to lift you by his power and place you on the top of the mountain to give him glory. May the word tonight ministers to you. I please, I invite you, read through carefully Daniel 6 and Daniel 3. Young people, you have a purpose, a purpose in God. In my youthful days, we used to have a song that says, Dare to be a Daniel and dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose cause and there to make it known. Make known the greatness of your God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the Holy Spirit permeate every home tonight and everywhere that your people are viewing tonight's closing service minister by the power of your holy spirit in jesus name amen my brothers and sisters there are so much hurt in our country hurt from various situations Lost of employment, challenging in business, business stores are being closed, persons are grieving because of the multiple murders across the island. Persons are just emotionally troubled, emotionally hurt. You can go to a doctor and you can get medicine for some physical illness. But emotionally, there's not much that a doctor can do more than just to curtail. But there is a God who can heal every emotional hurt, wound, and trauma. You may be going through stress and depression. Tablets might stabilize your depression, but God can deliver you out of your depression. And I want to pray for you tonight. Receive God's word by faith. Lord, I speak a word into every life that are going through difficult situations. Sicknesses, virus, disease, terminal illness, emotional trauma, emotional hurt, emotional wounds. Spirit of God, I pray, God, that you will now minister into the lives of hurting persons. I pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Deliverance from the bondage of sickness, from the bondage of demon oppression and demon possession, from the bondage of emotional hurt, unforgiveness. 
because it is so difficult when you're hurting to forgive. But for personal healing, I pray God that person begin to grasp the willingness to forgive the one who have hurt them. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will lift up those who have fallen down and restore them back to you. May your peace be ministered tonight. Paul calls it the peace that passeth all understanding. Father, we are depending on you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're so grateful, sisters and brothers, for the ministry of Bishop Conrad Pitkin. What a mighty man of God, speaking so clearly to us night after night about the things of Almighty God, challenging our hearts to become closer to our God. As you're at home or maybe in your motor vehicle or at a friend's home in a watch party, we are so delighted that you are able to join us. But we also would like for you to make a stronger commitment to your God and to your faith. We therefore invite you to make a commitment to walk closer to your God for 2021. If you need help, if you want someone to stand with you this evening as we provide leadership and counsel to you, you can call the numbers 876-922-7140 or 876-922-7141. Make a call right now and someone will be on the other side of the line ready to give you spiritual support and counsel at this time. I want to take this opportunity to say a big thanks to all those who gave us support throughout the course of this week. We want to thank our media partners, MTM TV and Love FM for standing with us in the gap in this very challenging time. You have been a big support and we really do appreciate it. Thanks to all those who volunteered, those who participated in our programs throughout the week. May the grace of God be with you. And now we part with our benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now, throughout this year, and forever. Amen. Mountains and valleys.